The Tesseract, also known as the Space Stone, the first of the Infinity Stones to appear in the MCU. You guys have seen this across my channel and other social media for quite a while now. I think it's time I showed you how I made it. Let's get started. This thing was super fun, but super stressful to make, and I still haven't worked out all of the bugs on it. However, it's gonna be a little bit of a two-part build. I'm gonna show you how I made the Tesseract and maybe how you can make your own, and then I'm gonna cover the Tesseract containment unit, which makes a very quick appearance at the end of the first Avengers movie. So let's get started, we'll take a look at it, and hopefully by the end of it, you'll understand how to make your own. Now, these files were designed by Quinton Esp or Quinto Cosmaker on Etsy. He's a good friend, and he's the one who modeled my Mjolnir, Stormbreaker, and Yarnborn. And I approached him with this project because I had never seen anybody fully design this to be printable and hold the Tesseract. And I'm, I, I love how this thing came out. It's such a cool centerpiece to the Infinity Stone collection. And hopefully through this, you'll get a better appreciation for it and have a better understanding of how to make it. Now, I'm not gonna take you through every single step. I'm only gonna explain to you how really I made it. So you can go grab the files, print them yourselves, and you can understand how this all goes together. So first, let's take a look at the Tesseract. Now, there are a million and one ways to make the Tesseract. I've seen people use um, baseball uh, display cases and different types of plastic. Mine is, I think, even simpler than that. It is a clear 3D printed uh, box and clear PLA, 0% infill. And if you open up the inside, you can find the space stone. Like the rest of my Infinity Stone props, you can remove the, uh, the stone that correlates with the prop. Now, obviously, this is a gimmick that I added. You could just throw LEDs in there. You can make it a lot cleaner, but I needed a way to open up the prop. Now, this is a very simple print. Again, I think this is, two, I believe this is a two wall print. Experiment around with it for the translucency, and it helps diffuse the light pretty nicely. Now, obviously, the bottom has the LEDs. It has the battery pack. It even has a very tiny switch I added so I can turn it on and off. And then I use some cotton to help diffuse everything. And then the stone just sits on some metal wires and a magnet, and it sits right there. Now the system itself comprises of some pretty basic components. A little switch I pulled out of my cosplay LED eyes, and you can break this open and get the switch out and put it into anything. Or you can just use this entire battery pack if you so wish. But remember, this only puts out three volts, and the LEDs I have require five to seven volts. Now this is just an LED, a blue LED strip. You can cut it, you can solder it together and uh, bend them and fuse them and bunch them all up and put them inside the Tesseract. But remember your voltages. I'm using a rechargeable LiPo battery. Now this is a 3.7. It's very hard to see because now it's covered by cotton, but there is a um, seven volt LiPo battery sitting on the bottom here. And it's a very simple circuit connecting everything together. The battery goes to the switch, the switch goes to the LEDs and that's it. And it turns on and off. And I even left the charger hanging right here so I can recharge the Tesseract without having to take everything apart. And I used a very, very simple piece of clear tape as a hinge so I can open everything up. This is the basic wiring diagram for the Tesseract itself. You have the battery system, the positive goes to the positive side of the LED or light you're using, and then you're only interrupting the negative with a little switch. Very simple to do, and you can replace this with a reed switch, you can replace this with almost anything I've showed you across the channel. You just need a way to turn it on and off. And then it follows back down to the negative of the battery. A very, very simple circuit. Now the Tesseract containment unit is what a lot of you guys are here for, and this is what you really, really wanna see. This is a very big multi-part print and it did take some time. It was printed mostly on my CR10 Max and uh, a couple other printers, but it really, everything here will even fit a tiny Ender 3. You'll just need to print a couple more pieces and it'll take a little bit longer. Now the handles do turn, and the idea is that the handles rotate the cover here. Now that's the last thing I still need to work out. The covers do like to pop out of the little tabs that do house them. But let me take this apart a little bit and show you what the pieces are. Here are the pieces broken down. Let me move this so we can actually see. Now, I have version one. I have the prototype version. After I assembled it, he has since gone and edited the files to be even easier to assemble. Originally, there was no way to connect these bars to this plate, there now is. I had to get a little creative and I melted some uh, nuts in there and now there's tiny screws that I can thread through to hold this entire assembly together. These three rods print, they lock into place there and then you can take the top part and just lay it right on top. Now, I would very much suggest printing and assembling this part first and then measuring the distance in here between these two holders and then using that to print your Tesseract. 
because you can figure out the exact dimensions of the cube and scale it up and down to fit nice and snug inside of there. I also added two little pieces of felt in there to help kind of lock it in a little bit more securely, but this is the basic hourglass shape. From there are these two rings. And again, these require modification on my part. You won't run into this problem. Now, now that I have these little uh, screws here, I need a little hole for them to sit in or else it wouldn't sit flush. But all I did was melt some holes in there and now these sit perfectly flush. And then I needed a way, I like to be able to remove things and take them apart to um, do maintenance and stuff on them. You don't need to do this, but I wanted to make this removable again and it worked out to show you how this all goes together. I added a couple nuts into the plastic here just by melting them in. Now, what that allows me to do is line up the parts like so and take some extra hardware and thread them through. Now, obviously this is going to uh, leave some uh, nut, um, the he bolt heads exposed, but I kind of think it adds a little bit of a nice look to it. It gives it a little bit more of a metal feel. But do note that aside from these two large caps right here, each one of these little pegs and each one of these little pointy crowns is a separate piece you can print. And I went and hand painted all of them before securing them onto the part. So just here alone, we're looking at upwards of 20 parts in just these two sections. This handle, I love how this, I love this gold. I love how beautiful this came out. And it prints in a couple pieces as well. Each four of these little inserts prints and they lock into place. This entire puck prints, this whole cover prints and then the handle prints itself and it all fuses and locks together very nicely. So if you do plan on holding this and picking it up, I would very much use some very, very strong uh, cyanoacrylate or some type of really strong epoxy to bond these together. This is a type of prop where PLA welding really isn't gonna come into much use because there's so much detail on it. So you really need to make sure you have a good bond. Now you'll also have to print these little peg systems and what these allow you to do, there's two little slots down here and they drop in to the container like so and they rotate left and right. You're gonna wanna make sure you uh, trim and shave and sand so these spin nicely because once these are in there, they sit right in here between this, kinda like that, and this is what can spin and open and close the uh, plastic covers. Now, again, this is gonna take a little bit of finesse. I do still need to work on those and maybe you'll, you guys will uh, crack the code before I do, but there's these little tabs right here that the plastic locks around. And then this is a friction fit and all you do is you drop it in the top and now the entire unit can spin just with the twist of your hand. And it does have a really nice locking feature and it just, you can feel it when it hits the end. Now I'm not gonna go and put this one on because it'll become unstable and I don't wanna do that yet, but it locks in the exact same way. Now I very much suggest printing these in a very high infill. I believe I have these at 50% infill and you really should make sure your layer adhesion is good because these could very easily snap. Maybe if you really wanted to be extra about it, you can go into mesh mixer and add uh, metal rods through them. Maybe a two or four millimeter metal rod could really help beef them up or just make them out of metal completely. That'd be kind of cool actually. Now I'm using clear acetate plastic. This stuff is very, very forgiving and easy to work with. And with a little bit of heat, you can make it retain its shape. Now, however you want to put this in there is totally up to you before or after you secure it all together. I think it would be really cool to go and get actual glass cut and molded and try to find something that's already cylindrical like this, like a vase or something, and make it real glass, but that's way down the line. And for now, it kind of partially cooperates. I think the plastic I'm using is just too thin. And as a display piece, I don't really need it to have all the functions and gimmicks. It's just a little bit of extra. So I am gonna work on refining that. But for now, again, for display, I'm really happy with it. Now, without the plastic hooked up, you can just twist the handles however you feel fit and you can you know, recreate the scene where they teleport away. But that's how the whole unit goes together. So here are the files for the Tesseract and Q does include some pretty cool pictures showing you how everything is assembled. And this should also kind of clue you in on how many more parts you need to print. There's four of these you need to print, obviously two handles, two caps, two of two, uh, almost everything, sometimes eight to 12, depending on how this all locks together, where these tabs go. So it should make a lot of sense once you start assembling it and it'll help you out a lot. Now, this is a, a giant infinity printer. This is, this is not actually the printer, but here are the parts. And there's a lot of detail on them. So really take your time printing these and it'll pay dividends, I promise you. 
Now this handle, you could print it standing up like this and use some support on the inside. If you flip it upside down, it'll put support on a visible spot, so I might not recommend that. This would probably benefit greatly from tree support. I'd print this also in a pretty high infill, maybe 15 to 20, if you're gonna be carrying this thing around. This is another detailed part. This thing came out beautiful and uses pretty much no supports at all on it. So all of this does fit on an ender, albeit just barely, and you are gonna need to take your time printing it. Even the, the tall rod just barely fits, but you'll be good to go. Now this turning cap right here, this is what requires these little quills and you're gonna need to print eight of these and they lock into here. I'm not too sure why he didn't just use these as one part. It's a little, I think he needed them to kind of wobble and move just a little bit to be a little bit stronger. So maybe that's the reason. And then you'll need two of these, you'll need two of these bars and you'll need four of these little peg systems right here. You'll need two of these, six of the rods, and then we have the Tesseract here. Now this is just a solid cube, and you can get real creative with how you print this and how you want it to come out. So what I ended up doing, if I remember correctly, is I completely got rid of the top layers and made them zero, and then I dropped the infill down to zero, and then I sliced it. And what that gave me was a box, that's it. This would be a clear PLA box, and then you can see it has two walls. Now, if we wanted, we could make this one. Now this is a single wall box. Now the adhesion and strength on this isn't gonna be the best. So uh, print in your own uh, caution, but do what you will. Do some testing, do some measurements. Again, I would very much suggest printing out the entire container and then printing the Tesseract because then you can measure in between the holding points. Now for making a cover for it, you can get a little bit more creative too put some top layers back on, let's say two, and then drop this almost all the way through the bed. So just one part is barely visible, one layer. So Z right there. And then print again. Now you can turn raft on, turn raft off, that's totally up to you. And what this will do is print just one layer, or if you go up just a little bit more, in this case, it'll now print two layers. So you can make a lid for the Tesseract. And that's it. The Tesseract is a super simple print. And if you want to just print this, go for it. And you can see here just how many prints there actually are to this. And this is a video I did in the garage. Again, like uh, uh, one of the other videos I'm doing, wasn't too happy with the audio, but you can see how all the prints came out and just how many parts go to this. These were some very smooth prints that I was pretty happy of. I definitely set these on a higher setting than I typically do because I wanted them to come out nice. Now right here, you can see a lot of leftover support material from how I printed these caps. Now I printed them upside down like this because the op opposing side is where I needed to insert those quills for the turning. Now this all gets covered by the top um, handle. So as long as you can get these out, you'll be fine. You can sand them down, you can melt them down. It gets covered anyway, so if it's ugly, it's not the end of the world. Right here, you can see me putting on the cap, and yeah, you can see some of the infill, but as long, again, as long as you sand it down, my palm sander knocked that down beautifully, and you couldn't even tell that it was ever even there. And you can see how it turns on the cap before all of the assemblies, and you can see the quills hiding here inside. And here is that little rotating locking peg system that sits in there, and I just glued those together. So it was easier, as you saw um, in the assembly when I was showing you guys before, how I just glued those pegs together and I haven't had a problem since. Now for painting, I got as close as I could to the scene in the movie where Thor and Loki disappear. And I wanted this to be a much brighter gold than my typical uh, gold that I use on the other props. This was all hand painted with a special Gaia star bright gold. And I know this is meant for an airbrush. I didn't have one at the time, so I made do. And I'm happy with the brush strokes and the almost metallic effect it gave to the parts. Everything else was brushed over with some Rust-Oleum metallics and Rust-Oleum gun metals, followed by just a little bit of rub and buff around some of the edges to give it a little bit more of a weathered look. Now I could pick this thing apart all day. Some parts of it I'm not the happiest with. I wish I had spent more time sanding these little pegs and making them look a little nicer. Maybe one day there'll be a version two that's just a little bit bigger. This one is a little small compared to the one in the movie. Same with the Tesseract. But again, I'm very happy with it. That just about does it for this video, guys. Um, yeah, I didn't go into the most detail because I've already showed you guys how to paint, how to test colors, how to wire electronics. I just wanted to show you guys how this was assembled and you guys seem to be more responsive to that. You don't want a half hour long video of me explaining every little uh, bob and bit and detail of this thing. So hopefully this was enough to give you enough confidence to dive into the build and make your own Infinity Stone prop. 
it's really just as simple as getting the prints out there, assembling them, and painting them. If you guys haven't already, if you could subscribe, that would really help the channel out. And I'm sure you don't want to miss the next Infinity Stone prop we make. Loki Scepter from the first Avengers movie. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, in the meantime, please drop a comment down below or hit me up on Instagram or go check out the Discord. There's a link for that down below, completely free. We're over 4,000 members. It's going great and we can answer any questions you guys have. I know you guys have been waiting for the whole Infinity Stone project videos for quite a while and I promise there's a pretty good payoff at the end. You guys have been very patient and it's been so fun to make these. So thank you so much for watching and you guys have a good day. Still recording.